from last year. Shoot on my shot, boy, I'm long range. Me and the team on the same plane. Stay down, never switched up. The only thing changed was the game. I'm in the zone now. Let the cash change what we on now. When I pull up, know it's going down. Foot on the gas, ain't no slow. Welcome into a special edition of the David Glenn Show here on the North Carolina Sports Network. My name is Mike Waddell, joined as always by David Glenn. And very important, right at the top of today's special edition, that we remind you that David is one of the few independent and still active media members who has covered ACC expansion all the way back to the addition of Florida State in the early 1990s and even back to the late 1980s most importantly now the media member who broke the acc grant of rights story back in 2013 is the guy here to my right david glenn and you can find coverage of that huge news on your google you know just it's very easy to find this information now david was also the creator and the longtime owner of the ACC Sports Journal, the poop sheet, the guys of my generation and my father's generation. It was the Bible of ACC information, and David is a huge part of that legacy. He has also been credited by the Associated Press, ESPN, CBS, NBC, and virtually everyone on the grants of rights issue. Now, of course, DG, is the vice president co-owner here of the north carolina sports network vice president of content i should say and we are excited to have you here today david in this cloudy landscape of grant of rights and conference reformation it is really a real wasteland of banned information so we come to you today with some very quick and simple questions number one on my agenda is why now, as of today, is Clemson University suing the Atlantic Coast Conference? Well, Mike, it's always good to be with you. And since I did break the original grant of rights story back in 2013, just so people are clear on it, uh, not always when a smaller regional family-owned media outlet breaks big news do the heavyweights give credit. Uh, <laughs> so when folks Google stuff from 2013, uh, I was, of course, proud to break the story and happy to continue our tradition of the ACC Sports Journal and accsports.com, which I no longer own, just to be clear. Uh, but we had a great track record, of, track record of breaking some of the biggest stories in ACC history. And it is always nice when the heavyweights include in their TV coverage or their website coverage. Uh, David Glenn of accsports.com was the first to report this grant of rights in 2013, just as we were first to report uh, a lot of expansion issues, including Louisville, for example, when the Cardinals joined the league. Uh, but that's just I just wanted to be clear that that's the reference Mike was making. Why is Clemson suing the ACC? Well, much as we've discussed in our previous videos relating to the Florida State lawsuit against the ACC, and of course, in that case, the return lawsuit from the ACC toward Florida State, there's a legal aspect to it and there's a practical, real world aspect to it. I personally don't believe that Clemson has great confidence in its number one novel argument, which we'll get to in just a bit. The Tigers are actually arguing that the grant of rights, their pledging of the value of their media rights to the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Tigers argued in their legal filing earlier today that that grant of rights applies not through 2027, which was the original grant of rights, not through 2036, which was that 2016 amendment of the grant of rights, which two different Clemson presidents signed, by the way. Um, but they're suggesting the grant of rights only applies to any school as long as they're a member of the ACC. That is a novel legal argument. I personally do not believe that Clemson's own attorneys believe that it will be a successful legal argument, and I'll tell you why a bit later. But beyond the legal aspect of many lawsuits, there's the practical aspect of many lawsuits. Just as we've told our viewers and followers and listeners at the North Carolina Sports Network all along, 
Florida State wants certainty with its lawsuit, even though the Seminoles lawyers know that some of their legal arguments are not very good at all. Others of their legal arguments are interesting, and we'll see how judges start reacting to them. The Seminoles are actually uh, in front of a judge this Friday in their lawsuit against the ACC. So we'll see how that plays out, and attorneys will gradually begin to get a better view of how strong or not their various legal arguments are. But just as the Seminoles had motivation beyond their legal arguments, timing. They, the earlier they know what it's going to cost to leave the ACC, the better. Invitations from other leagues. The SEC and the Big Ten ain't offering Florida State or Clemson a spot in their leagues until those universities eliminate the legal black cloud that is hovering over Florida State and now Clemson. Ain't going to happen. Those schools know it ain't going to happen. So by filing the lawsuit, you may change the timetable and even maybe the amount if some of your successful some of your arguments are successful the, beyond beyond the legal argument you want cost certainty a better idea of what it's going to cost to leave you want to move the timetable up if you don't file a lawsuit things can drag longer if you do file a lawsuit i still think it's a multi year process but at least the wheels are turning toward the seminoles and the tigers knowing what it will cost them to leave in the end and of course, there's always the very practical element, Mike, as you know, as a former Division I athletic director, Clemson and Florida State want to put maximum legal and financial pressure on the ACC to be motivated toward a settlement at some point. If the ACC, which has already spent millions of dollars on attorneys, I have copies of the ACC's annual tax returns, and I can promise you that is the case. They are now spending millions more on attorneys. And some attorneys are working on Florida State's lawsuit filed in Florida. Other attorneys are working on the ACC's responsive lawsuit against Florida State filed here in North Carolina. Now you have ACC attorneys working on the Clemson lawsuit filed in the Palmetto State earlier today. There is something called lawyer fatigue. You just get tired of writing checks worth lots of money for att to attorneys. And obviously, now the ACC is dealing with three separate lawsuits. One, they filed. Two, incoming, if you will. So again, beyond Clemson's legal arguments, whatever people think of them, strong or not so strong, there are those practical elements where the Seminoles and the, and the Clemson Tigers want to leave the ACC. Florida State has been more antagonistic and argumentative with its public comments. We have mentioned in our coverage all along, Clemson feels mostly similarly as Florida State. They've just been more private with their complaints. They haven't, haven't been calling out the ACC in quite the same ant antagonistic ways over a matter of many months. But I believe that Clemson's motivations are here are much more uh, the practical reality, move the timetable, find cost, cost certainty, get through this craziness and come out the other side so that you can start waving your arms to the SEC and the Big Ten saying, here we are and we're truly available and unencumbered now. So with Florida State and with Clemson, currently with active lawsuits against the Atlantic Coast Conference, and at least the Atlantic Coast Conference with one active lawsuit against one of their members being Florida State, there's a lot of discontent right now in the ACC. You were just at the league's premier event, the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament in Washington, D.C. During that event, a lot of politicians hovering in and around college athletics, and it just happened to be where this tournament was taking place. Obviously, a lot of discussions going on. Did you get any inkling that there are other schools in the Atlantic Coast Conference that are pondering at this moment or in the near future similar type of engagements against the Atlantic Coast Conference? I don't believe that any other ACC school has that on the front burner. You never say never. Uh, if enough schools want to leave the Atlantic Coast Conference, obviously, one thing that would get everybody out at no cost is the dissolution of the league. If you had more members than not who wanted to depart, I don't think we're anywhere near that for many months now. 
We've had the public noise coming from Tallahassee. We've had the private complaints coming from Clemson, South Carolina. These are the two schools that have filed lawsuits. Of course, all of the other universities have attorneys advising them on how they see the strength of the grant of rights, how they see uh, legal arguments about that $140 million or so exit fee, which again is separate from the grant of rights. Uh, so all these, all, all 15, soon to be 18 universities have advisors legally on these matters, but I am not aware of a third university that is about to do what Clemson just did today uh, and, and add to the ACC's legal headaches. When SMU, Cal, and Stanford were admitted to the ACC affected with the upcoming academic year, 2024-25, there were votes that were taken. Right here in North Carolina, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill voted against that expansion. North Carolina State University voted for that expansion. Since that time, the University of North Carolina Board of Governors, the University of North Carolina System Board of Governors, has come out with a declaration that they will now be, if not the deciding factor, very heavy in their engagement in any discussions by members of the University of North Carolina System to move on to other conferences. Is that an impediment? to one or both of these institutions to try to maximize their value, be it in the ACC, which would be status quo, or to seek refuge elsewhere if Florida State and Clemson are doing the same. Yeah, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because this, the UNC and the NC State circumstances are for way down the road. So I do want an opportunity to discuss the novel aspect of today's Clemson filing uh, shortly, but let me just quickly address that. For those who don't know, of course, the, the state of North Carolina, like all states, has a bunch of public universities, and there is a governing body above those public universities, whereas Duke and Wake Forest of the ACC are private universities, and they're not governed by that, governed by that organization. NC State and UNC, as public universities, members of the ACC, are governed by that organization. Now, throughout their history, State and Carolina have been allowed to make athletic decisions on their own. If they see it fit as the experts, right, they're the university president, they're the athletic director, then the governing body of the state university system is not going to overreach and get in the way of that. As Mike mentioned, the state of North Carolina's governing body has decided to do things a little differently because of the ongoing possibility of ACC expansion slash realignment. On the one hand, if you throw your weight around and prevent, let's say, UNC is viewed along with Florida State and Clemson as the most desirable object of the Big Ten or the, AC, or the SEC. If you prevent UNC from leaving by edict, not letting the university president decide, not let, letting the athletic director Bubba Cunningham decide, you, of course, are hurting the Tar Heels financially. You're preventing them from maximizing their revenue if they had decided to want to leave. And again, none of this is on the front burner. State and Carolina and every other member of this league is waiting to see how the Clemson and Florida State lawsuits unfold. Because if it turns out it's really, 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 really expensive to leave, and that's one possible result, well, guess what? You're, th these things are going to quiet down. If it turns out that it's really inexpensive to leave and Clemson and Florida State get out at a low price, you're going to see all sorts of jumping around college athletics, including with more ACC members choosing to leave. But that NC State-UNC dynamic, while important, is nowhere near the front burner. And of course, the legislators or the decision makers, I should say, they're thinking if they let Carolina leave, well, then that other public university they're trying to protect, NC State, would be damaged because it would be a member of a league in decline. So usually, again, the state, the, the decision makers have been hands off in these university decisions. But as you know, Mike, in our state of North Carolina, there are more and more examples of powerful people who, when they see things not going their way, they will break 
from 70 years of tradition and say, yeah, we used to let you all make those decisions on your own, North Carolina High School Athletic Association, or all sorts of other examples, uh, sports and otherwise. The culture in our state right now is for some powerful people, if they see the independent decisions going in ways that make them uncomfortable, they just grab more of that power back for themselves. And we could end up in a situation where, Mike, where it's UNC or NC State suing the governing body of our state university system for, for taking away their autonomy about, make, you know, about making these decisions that, generally speaking, are left to the individual universities in all sorts of contexts, rather than the Board of Governors deciding that they are going to the, be the be-all, know-all, see-all decision makers, even on these matters that are typically handled by the individual universities themselves. Michael Berard, Managing Director Investments with the Founders Group at Stiefel, works with a select group of high net worth individuals and institutions to develop and implement investment plans tailored to their specific objectives and risk tolerances. If you are interested in highly personalized, well-researched guidance and outstanding personal service, you can contact Michael at 984-364-2002. That's 984-364-2002. Stiefel Nicholas and Company Incorporated, member SIPC and NYSE. We're talking with David Glenn of the David Glenn Show here on the North Carolina Sports Network. I'm Mike Waddell. The big news today out of the Palmetto State is that Clemson University is now suing the Atlantic Coast Conference, becoming the second of 15 active member institutions in the ACC to be engaged in lawsuits against the league that they have called home. Some since 1992 in the case of Florida State and the case of Clemson, all the way back to the founding times of the ACC in 1953, 71 years ago. But it was that last lawsuit, the most recent filings today, David, that have you just scratching your head. I mean, th this Clemson argument right now, what do you make of it? Well, there's a novel aspect to Clemson's argument in its lawsuit filed today. And then there are some other themes that are much like the Florida State lawsuit. For example, we're not going to dive back into the antitrust type argument that Florida State has made and Clemson is making. They're essentially saying here in America, we typically choose freedom. We don't want, whether it's a, an employment contract that might uh, impose a big penalty if you on, on an individual, if he or she chose to leave their their company, a non-compete clause is what a lot of folks think of there. If a non-compete clause is too broad, a judge will often declare it uh, an, an illegal restraint on trade. There are a lot of aspects to antitrust law that we won't get into, but anti-competitive conduct is often found to be illegal under American antitrust law, sometimes state law. And Florida State made these arguments. Remember their numbers they were throwing around it's going to cost the Seminoles 500 million plus if they want to leave right now. Remember, that's 140 million or so in the exit fee, and that's the loss of TV rights, football, basketball, and otherwise, all the way through 2036. When you do the math on the value of those TV rights all the way through 2036 plus the 140 million or so exit fee, more traditional exit fee, it does come out no no longer 500 million plus, but depending on when you leave, it's 400 plus million dollars. So Florida State and Clemson are both making these claims that that is an unenforceable violation of antitrust law, an unenforceable against public policy, restrictive uh, and too restrictive under American law um, aspect of the way the ACC does business. Maybe a judge agrees to that with that to some extent or not. Again, that's a parallel between what Clemson filed today and what Florida State had filed previously. The novel idea that the Tigers have in their lawsuit, Mike, is the one that has me scratching my head. And, and I, I want to remind everybody, it's lawyers' jobs to be as creative as possible and sometimes to throw as much stuff against the wall as possible and see what sticks with a judge. So I understand why Clemson's attorneys have made this argument where they're really arguing 
that the grant of rights applies to any ACC school only as long as that school remains an ACC member. And I want to try to emphasize why I think that is an absurd, nonsensical, illogical, truly laughable, and, and I don't use that word easily, it is a truly laughable, bordering on bad faith, frivolous legal argument. And here's why. Mike, for as long as we've been around college athletics, according to ACC bylaws, I'll put it this way, it's in the bylaws that you as a member of the ACC sign over the right to negotiate on the whole conference's behalf to the conference itself. So whether it was John Swafford back then or ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips or somebody else moving forward, that person and his advisors around him, who are often uh, in one aspect athletic direct, university athletic directors of member schools, he also consults with the Council of Presidents, who were the university presidents at the time, whether the 2013 Grant of Rights or the 2016 Amendment to the Grant of Rights. Clemson had one president in 2013, a different president in 2016. So two different well-respected presidents of Clemson University signed the grant of rights that now the Tigers are trying to wiggle out of and the Seminoles are trying to wiggle out of. The Tigers are arguing that the grant of rights doesn't apply to them if they leave all the way through 2036, which is the clear language in my legal opinion as a guy who practiced law for a long time. The clear language of the ACC bylaws is that the members give the conference the right to negotiate on the whole league's behalf, right? Notre Dame is an exception to that. They didn't sign the same agreement. Notre Dame negotiates its football deal by itself. The Fighting Irish have a separate football deal. All the other ACC members in the ACC bylaws, it, it's right there. It's, it's, I can give you the numbers if, if I needed to, you know, section two point whatever, is, is where the league members give the conference the right to negotiate media terms. Well, if all of your media rights are only negotiable while you're still a league member, why was the grant of rights needed at all? That's what, that's what the ACC is going to argue in front of a judge. Read the bylaws and then read the grant of rights and you'll see that it's in plain English language that the grant of rights was designed to extend what individual schools were giving to the ACC all the way into the future. It even says, Mike, and I'll try to dig up the language here, uh, the media rights policy in the ACC bylaws is section 2.1.0. So you can, you can look that up if you like. But I, I want to read from the actual grant of rights in 2013. You ready for this? Again, Clemson is arguing that the grant of rights only applies to the Tigers as long as they're still in the ACC. Listen to this language. You do not need to be an attorney to understand this language. Section one, grant of rights. Each of the member institutions hereby irrevocably, everybody knows that word, and exclusively grants to the conference during the term as defined below. And it's again, first defined through 2027, in the amendment, it's defined through 2036. All rights necessary for the conference to perform the contractual obligations of the conference ex expressly set forth in the ESPN agreement. You ready for this, Mike? This is from the grant of rights. I am not making this up. Regardless of whether such member institution remains a member of the conference during the entirety of the term, you did not have to be my colleague in law school to understand that, that the plain meaning and understanding of those English words emphasizes in the first paragraph after the words grant of rights, regardless of whether such member institution remains a member of the conference during the entirety of the term. I don't know how you can make English much more clear and simple than that. And yet the Tigers novel argument today is no, it's not through 27. Oh, no, no, it's not through 2036, even though the black and white language clearly says you can not be a member and you still signed over your rights to the ACC. I, I would love to know who, who has, without smiling or laughing, 
a real legal argument otherwise. I would invite Clemson's attorneys to go on national TV and make that, that they've made several arguments. I am not mocking the others. I am mocking this one. Deliberately and intentionally, as an attorney, I am mocking this argument. It, there, is, there is no sane interpretation of those English words that means you can leave wherever you want and you didn't sign anything over beyond whenever you decide to leave. Th th that is an asinine interpretation of basic English language. And it should be and will be laughed out of court by any judge who is truly an indep independent-minded judge. There are a handful of Florida State's legal arguments that are just truly absurd. Just simply trying to compare the ACC, which is a lesser football product, with the Big Ten and the SEC financially, it's any any even keeled, informed, level headed judge will laugh that attempt at making the situations perfectly parallel. They'll laugh that out of court. Again, Florida State has other more powerful, more interesting arguments, but but no smart person in court or out of court believes that the ACC, with smaller TV audiences in football, could have negotiated the same deals that the Big Ten and the SEC did. No, no smart person is willing to say that out loud and, and expect to be taken seriously. So these lawyers, for the most part, know where their arguments are lesser. But I want to read one more thing to you too, Mike, because let's say we just weren't sure how people were thinking of the, at the time in 2013 or 2016. We're not sure what they had in mind at the time that they signed it. Let me dig up a direct quote from then Clemson president, Jim Clements. This is from the year 2016. This is his statement when Clemson and the ACC announced the revised grant of rights and a tweaked, a tweaked deal with ESPN that included, of course, the ultimate creation of the ACC network, more money, et cetera. This is word for word, the Clemson president, Jim Clements statement, quote, the ACC is a great conference, and this increases the national exposure, brings in additional revenue, and offers greater opportunity for student athletes. And here's the punchline. For us and the Florida states and others, it stabilizes the conference long term. Those are not my words. Those are the words of the university president who signed on behalf of Clemson. If you really believed while you were signing the amended grant of rights that you could leave or somebody else could leave and that grant of rights thing just didn't apply because you felt like leaving, why would you or Florida State or anyone else put out a statement saying that we believe, in his words, this stabilizes the conference long term? That's, that's not the ACC's attorney's words. That's Clemson's university president's words. How does the grant of rights provide long-term stability if you don't, if you still retain your rights, if you decide to leave? That, that is, nobody should take that argument seriously, just like some of Florida State's arguments are asinine. They just don't make legal sense. Again, there are creative, interesting arguments and even some legal technicality arguments where Florida State's lawsuit and Clemson's lawsuit have worth listening to elements. No doubt about it. The idea that you could leave whenever you want to without losing those media rights into the future is completely contradicted by Florida State officials' public comments, Clemson officials' public comments, the other 13 or, or however many there were at the time, athletic directors and, and university presidents who agreed to this and also put on put out their public statements about how it helped the long-term stability of the league. It's um I we live in a world where people make asinine arguments all the time. Uh in the American political system that has become incredibly commonplace and they just have come to hope that naive uneducated, uninformed, clueless, gullible people will follow and believe whatever asinine marks, uh, asinine uh, arguments they're making. That is what Clemson is doing here. It is an indefensible, illogical, unreasonable, nonsensical interpretation 
of the words of the ACC bylaws and the words of the ACC grant of rights. So whatever this lawsuit, whatever merit is in this lawsuit today that Clemson filed, it has absolutely nothing to do with the most novel argument that the Clemson Tigers uh, put forth today. Because if the grant of rights only applied as long as you were a member of the league, do you think Oklahoma and Texas would have left the Big 12 and paid for the right to leave if they if if their interpretation of their grant of rights was that you could leave without any without leaving any of your media rights behind? Of course not. They paid up because they know what the plain language of these grants of rights mean. Again, there are legal technicality arguments to make, and Clemson should make them. The idea that you're not leaving your rights behind anytime you feel like leaving is just an insult to everyone's intelligence who can walk and chew gum at the same time. David, I have one last question before we close out this special edition of the David Glenn Show on the North Carolina Sports Network. And before I get to the question, I'll give our, our viewers a little history lesson that the first school and only one of two schools that left the Atlantic Coast Conference back in the early 70s was the University of South Carolina. And then the ACC added in Georgia Tech. And then right around 1992, it was Florida State coming into the league. And then in 2014, the University of Maryland, whose departure had to be felt this past weekend as Gary Williams walked around the Capital One Arena in the District of Columbia at the ACC Basketball Tournament, a tournament that he revered as a player and as a coach. But Maryland leaves in 2014, and they leave with a negotiated exit of just over $30 million. That was a decade ago. Why are we at this point now to where it's so much more expensive? Ten years later, and two of the long-term members of the league are now involved in a legal back and forth with the entity that has protected them and nourished them for as long as we all can remember. Yeah, the bottom line, and in the Maryland case, it's interesting to point out that contractually, under the terms at the time, obviously the grant of rights did not exist back when Maryland left, and the exit fee was smaller when Maryland left. <laughs> By contract, Maryland owed the ACC roughly 51 or so million dollars to leave. The Terps ended up paying a negotiated settlement of 30 plus million dollars. So you could argue that they got out, the Terps, for roughly 20 million dollars less than they were contractually obligated to pay. And again, that gets back to the lawyer fatigue. Why would the ACC settle for 30 plus million? if contractually they believed Maryland owed 50 plus million. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that, but at some point it makes sense for both sides to settle. That's what Clemson and Florida State are trying to get toward here. Again, they have some intriguing arguments that would let them leave for a very small amount. I don't think those arguments are gonna be successful, but at some point down the road, if Clemson or Florida State says, thanks to lawyer fatigue, hey, let us leave for this lower amount. Not this full 450 plus million, but not some tiny amount either. Let's negotiate. And, and that's what's behind these lawsuits. I really don't think Florida State, Clemson, or, or either fan base, at least not the smart ones, they don't think that there's a magic wand or a side door where they get out to, for nothing or next to nothing. That is the legal version of a Hail Mary pass, except actual Hail Mary, Hail Mary passes in football have a better chance of success than either Clemson or Florida State getting out for zero. I can promise you that. And their lawyers, they know that. But if there's enough lawsuits and there's enough legal expenses, there could come a point where the ACC has a motivation, right? They they let Cle they let Maryland out 10 years ago for 30 plus million when it, they could have demanded 50 plus million and let that lawsuit drag on and on and on. They chose not to. You know the deal, Mike, as a longtime athletic director yourself, the, the money is so much bigger now that 10 years ago, when a lot of ACC schools and figures and decision makers were freaked out that Maryland left, and they were also freaked out that the ACC wants the wealthiest league. The ACC per school was the wealthiest league in America for most of the 90s and even the early 2000s.
Michael Berard, Managing Director Investments with the Founders Group at Stiefel, works with a select group of high net worth individuals and institutions to develop and implement investment plans tailored to their specific objectives and risk tolerances. If you are interested in highly personalized, well-researched guidance and outstanding personal service, you can contact Michael at 984-364-2002. That's 984-364-2002. Stiefel Nicholas and Company Incorporated, member SIPC and NYSE. With the rising popularity of football and with football now making up such a higher percentage of the value of these conference TV deals, the Big Ten and the SEC have surged way, way, way ahead. The ACC is on that second tier with the Big 12. Florida State and Clemson, probably among others, have been unhappy by that. But Clemson and Florida State are also the two biggest football brands. So they believe they'll find a wealthy landing place, either the Big Ten or the SEC, so that's where these lawsuits come from. But the bigger dollar, the bigger dollars are because with the 2013 grant of rights, remember, the ACC changed its exit fee as well. What was 51 million for Maryland, negotiated down to 30 plus million, is now 140 million plus exit fee. Why? Because the university presidents in the ACC at the time, in conjunction with John Swafford and his athletic directors, decided to increase the cost of leaving because. They were freaked out by Maryland leaving for the Big Ten. They also created this concept called the Grant of Rights, which other leagues do have and have had. So it wasn't brand new to the ACC, but it was created in 2013, amended in 2016, again, signed by different Florida State and Clemson presidents and, uh, and athletic directors were advising them at that time. And all their public comments are about how it stabilized the league well into the future. Which, is, which makes those legal arguments really ridiculous that they're pretending that it, it stands for something else or that you can leave whenever you want without leaving those rights behind. Uh, the dollars have gotten astronomical. Mike, when, when the ACC was the wealthiest league in America 20 years ago, they were giving out annual checks worth $10, 12000000 million to each school per year. Now, you know, the Big Ten and the SEC are giving out annual checks worth 50 or $60 million. It's only 20 years later, but not only have the dollars grown, those two leagues have surged past the ACC, and the ACC is kind of stuck there on Tier 2 with Big 12, as you saw with the college football playoff negotiations and other things. More money is at stake than ever before in the history of, of college athletics by a lot. And that's why Florida State and Clemson are looking at this $400 million plus cost of departure, we'll call it, rather than Maryland leaving for a piddly 30 plus million 10 years ago when the Terps knew they'd make they'd make that 30 million plus back within the first couple of years as members of the much wealthier Big Ten.